Hello everyone, it's Lindsay, and today I'm back with a highly requested video. Uh, so hopefully this answers some of the questions you guys have been sending me. Uh, this video is gonna be focusing on the newest product from Ranger and Tim Holtz. This is the Distress Watercolor Pencils. So this is a new medium added to the Distress line. If you guys have been following me here for a while, you know I love everything Distress inks, sprays, crayons, paints, you name it, I am all in on Distress products for a variety of reasons. I love the color palette primarily. Um, that is a big factor for me, especially when it comes to these um, in comparison to some other products, which I'll be sharing with you, um, but also just how they play with water. There's just some characteristics about these that are different than other water reactive mediums, but they're also just good quality. I have yet to get a uh, product from Ranger and Tim Holtz that is a dud. He is very specific when he is creating uh, products and he creates. So it's, not, you know, sometimes you get companies that are creating products when they don't have creators behind <laughs> the process and they're just kind of creating something and hoping that it works, but not fully understanding how it works. Tim Holtz creates, so he knows going into what, you know, when it comes to products, what he wants from them, how he wants them to perform. He's very particular about it, and because of that, you get good quality. So that is why, you know, I really love to stick with the Distress products. Now, if you are a Bible journaler, and this is what's gonna make my video probably a little bit different than some of the other review videos out there, is I am a Bible journaler. So I am creating in my journaling Bible and other notebooks and things like that. So uh, not only am I wanting to see these in general, but specifically how these are gonna play in my Bible. If you have worked with Distress products, you know that Distress products have a tendency to bleed through Bible paper. So of course, that's gonna be a key question when it comes to these, and I will be answering that and showing you that in detail. Uh, I think many of you are going to be excited about these when it comes to that aspect. Uh, I would encourage you to watch Tim Holtz's uh, release video for these. I will link it down below. It is a long one, um, but he is the brains behind this product. So he is going to you know, know the ins and outs, explain things better, have better examples than what I could possibly achieve here for you guys. Uh, so definitely go check that out. There's also several videos on YouTube from his like team of creators. If you just search Distress Watercolor Pencils, you can see a variety of ways that they've been being used. Um, I did watch through those. So some of the things that I'm showing, uh, I kind of already had an idea and then I saw somebody do a video and you know how they executed it. So uh, it's gonna be a mix of things kind of all in one video reference for you guys. There will be timestamps down below. So if you wanna come back to this video for specific uh, techniques, that will be all sectioned off and easy for you to find. Um, so hopefully this will be kind of an evergreen video that you can refer back to. Now, when I looked for these, they do seem to be sold out just about everywhere. Unfortunately, uh, I do imagine they will be bringing them back, though I'm not quite sure when that's going to happen. I have been able to find set two in a few different places, so I'm going to try to link those down below. I don't know what it is about set two. Uh, I love the colors in all three, and I'll be kind of specifically talking about that here in a second, but there does seem to be some of this set two kind of floating around out there still. So Distress Watercolor Pencils. We are going to be answering your guys' questions um, that you've sent me as well as um, showing some different techniques, comparisons. It's going to be a long video. So uh, these are a true watercolor pencil. I mean, there's nothing hidden about that. Uh, lots of questions about, you know, do I need these if I have XYZ? So I will be comparing them to some other products, um, which is not something I've seen out there in other videos. Um, I'm not definitely not comparing them to everything that's out there, but some of the other things you may have seen in my videos. So they come, there's three different sets. There are 12 pencils in each set. They do come in these nice uh, metallic cases. If you're familiar with the other storage tins that Tim Holtz does for the inks and sprays and crayons and all kinds of different things, um, these are similar to that. One thing I really like that they did with the colors. Now it is not the full set of distress colors. There's only 36 colors between the three. Hopefully in the future, they'll be, you know, releasing more of the color line from distress. I'm sure it depends on how well these do, um, but there are enough colors in these that you really can achieve just about anything that you're wanting to do. So each set comes, like I said, with 12 pencils and they did a really good job 
with the colors being enough of a rainbow in here that you can pretty much, you know, color just about anything. So it is a rainbow, pink to red to orange, yellow, green, um, kind of in between that, you know, that aqua -y color, blues, purples, and then some neutrals, which is really nice. So if you're only able to get one set, uh, you're able to still, you know, color in quite a bit. So I've gone ahead and swatched these out. Um, this is set number one kind of gives you an idea. This is probably my most used set so far as I'm working with these. I really love this pick raspberry color, Bayard Brick, Rusty Hinge, really great for fall. Um, if you're wanting kind of a, you know, bright fall with, you know, some neutral in there. Set one does have black soot and picket fence. So if you're wanting just you know, basic black and white, those are in here. I do like that they also included some of the newer colors like Villainous Potion, Salvage Patina, Speckled Egg, you know, some of the ones that have been recently released set two. Uh, again, you're getting, you know, pinks, reds, orange, yellows. This is that set that I am able to find in a few places. Uh, and it's really a good, a good set. So I'm not quite sure why this one is not sold out like the other two. I love the seamless preserve color. Um, that is the color I believe that I will be, um, no, I'm going to be doing pick raspberry for most of my comparisons and examples, but, uh, ice spruce is a favorite of mine. You've got vintage photo, antique linen. So you do have some neutrals in there. Really love fossilized amber. So you've got a really good range of colors in here as well. And then set three, again, you know, that kind of rainbow set there. You've got frayed burlap, hickory smoke. Now these do compare to the other distress products as far as color. The color is pretty uh, straight on, though it's, I don't know that you're going to get it quite as dark as if you were like blending multiple layers of the ink on cardstock. Of course, you're going to be able to build that color up a little bit heavier than you can uh, with these, um, but they are pretty true to the distress colors. I would say more true than the crayons are. Uh, some of my crayons are a little bit off in color, but these are you know, pretty spot on with the colors. So in future, you know, when I do, you know, what's in my cart videos and, and color comparisons for different Bible journaling kits and things like that, these will fall right into line with the other distress colors um, when I show those. And I will probably be using these quite a bit more than some of the other things that I have in my stash. So there is a look at those color palettes and you can see you get a really good, you know, rainbow of colors uh, between all the different uh, sets there. So like I said, one thing that is different is that I will be comparing them to some other products again, because we're coming from a Bible journaling standpoint. And so I know a lot of you guys have been watching my videos over the years, acquiring different products, and you want to know how these compare if you need to add them into your stash. Honestly, that's going to, you're going to have to make that decision. I can't make that decision for you. I will say initially when I saw them, I wasn't going to order them. I don't do a lot of coloring in my Bible, like stamping and coloring. I do a lot more kind of mixed media techniques, um, but I've started getting a lot of questions about them. So I ordered them. And as I've been putting together this video, I'm really loving them. And I will definitely be using them in place of some other things that are in my stash. So diving right in to talk about them. So one of the first things that I really noticed was the weight of these pencils. When I picked it up, it is so much heavier than some of my other products. And I think that's just the density of the pigment. Uh, you will notice I will be comparing them to uh, Inktense pencils, Neocolor 2 crayons, gelatos. And then I did pull, um, one of the distress crayons just to kind of see how it plays there. Um, a lot of questions about how they compare to regular watercolor pencils. I do have some regular watercolor pencils in my stash. However, I don't typically use those. If I'm using a watercolor pencil, I use my ink tents. I will have tip Tuesdays links down below because I have done tip Tuesdays on watercolor pencils, Neocolor 2 crayons, and gelatos. I believe all three of those. So a lot of the techniques that I show in those videos, you can use with these pencils as well. Um, there may be some overlap between this video and those other videos, um, but it might be helpful to watch all of them to just kind of see how they all kind of act, you know, differently. Uh, Inktense pencils are very similar to watercolor pencils. The only difference is that it is like an ink 
pigment that they're created out of. So it is permanent once it's dry. It's very, very bright in color and it's permanent once it's dry, which is not a typical characteristic of other watercolor pencils. Um, but these, if I'm using a watercolor pencil, this is what I reach for. So that's why I'm going to be comparing to them. Uh, so the Distress watercolor pencils are a woodless pencil. They are pencil. They are dry like a pencil, though they are creamy like a crayon. I don't know how to explain it other than I would say it perfectly sits in between a Neo Color 2 crayon and a watercolor pencil. Uh, it has that dry kind of texture to it when you color with it. You can sharpen it, which I'll talk about here in a second. Uh, and so that is nice. You know, you can get a nice fine point to color into smaller areas, but it reacts so easily with water. And when you're adding it to like a stamp and things like that, it has the softness of the crayon. So it's a perfect blend of the two. Uh, and so if you haven't, you know, fully invested in either one of those, this would be a good hybrid between the two. Woodless meaning that it is not encased. So the Ink tense pencils are like a true pencil in that it is a wood uh, encased around the pigment in the center. So when you sharpen this, it's kind of hard to save the shavings because it's a mix of wood and the pigment. Um, one of the lots of the comments on the Tip Tuesday for these videos, one of the techniques I show is where I dip it in water and then color with it, and everybody lost their minds because it can. You have to be careful because you don't want to get the wood wet because sometimes the entire pigment of this in the center there. Will just that whole stick will just fall out if you uh, damage the wood encasing. So I always am very careful to only dip the pigment in the water, but you don't have to worry about that with the Distress watercolor pencils um, because it's not wrapped in wood. This is just a paper wrapping. So you can completely unwrap this and it's just a stick of pigment. So one of the things I talk about with gelatos is gelatos, I, you guys might know, I hate, I, I don't particularly love gelatos. <laughs> they are very, very waxy. They ruin your pens. They're hard to write over. There's just, uh, they're very chunky. So you're not going to be doing like coloring into areas, um, but they are nice for tinting other mediums and things like that because they're straight pigments. So a lot of the things that you can do with straight pigment, you can do with these like tinting mediums and things like that. So again, nice because these aren't super waxy like gelatos, but they're a straight pigment, so you can do a lot of the things that you can do with gelatos. These are just kind of the, the workhouse, really great in between, between all of the different uh, products. So talking about sharpening, because that was uh, a, a question about these in particular. Can you sharpen them? Yes. So Tim Holtz does recommend the Prismacolor um, pencil sharpener, though I have seen some of the people using other various pencil sharpeners. And um, the nice thing about this one is it does have two different uh, sizes in here. So you can get a really, really long, sharp uh, point or kind of more how I have mine uh, sharpened. And then it does have this container that catches the shaving. So the really nice thing about these is you can use every little bit of this pencil because it's not encased anything. It's just a straight pigment. So I, you know, you can sharpen them and then save the shavings to use. And one way that I did that was to create a watercolor palette. So you guys, this is probably actually one of the ways I will mostly uh, use these. So I will insert a video of here in here how I was putting this together. Basically, I just went through each color individually, sharpened the pencil, collected the shavings into these half palette or half pan um, pieces in this palette, added a little bit of water. Now I did use a uh, distilled water. Um, we are on a well, so I typically use distilled water anyways because we have very hard water and that can um, d cause some issues with my crafting. Uh, I had noticed my distress sprayers were like growing things in them if I use my well water um, because it, I mean, it is filtered, but not, it's not treated the same way as city water is. Um, it's actually, I really prefer it <laughs> for cooking and drinking and things like that. But when it comes to crafting, I use distilled water. So I only have distilled water in my distress sprayer. And that is what I added just a couple little spritzes of that uh, to the shavings in the pan and that pigment just dissolves. I mean, you're able, I did kind of stir it up just to quicken the pro process, but it dissolves very easily on its own. And then I just set it out to dry overnight. And now I have this palette of color that I can use as watercolor. Now comparing these to watercolor, these are not quite as translucent as 
typical true watercolors, though some uh, crafting, they're more in line with like crafting watercolors. Uh, you'll notice when you color over a black line, it doesn't stay true black. It does seem to dull the blackness of your stamping just a bit. Um, I'm sure that's, you know, some additives that have been added to the pigment to get that true color um, that it has. But, um, you know, they're just, they're very creamy. They react very easily. And so now I've got this palette that I can use like a watercolor palette. So anytime that I sharpen my pencils, I'll save those shavings, add them to this palette. Uh, and then I can, you know, I'm using every little bit of the product. If you are somebody that is really aware of not wasting product, these will be great for you. You may notice with distressing, so if you're smushing it out onto a nonstick mat, you get all done. You, you know, a lot of times I'll just wipe up the excess ink that's on the palette. Uh, and you know, that's just wasted. These, I think you have a lot less waste when using these pencils. So I've got that whole palette. I will link this one down below. They had a few different kind of tin designs and things like that. It was nice because it does come with the, um, magnets that go on the bottom of the pan so they just fit right in there the half pans were plenty big enough uh, for you know the pigment that i was using so i really love that you can you know kind of get multiple products out of this one product so i will have again everything linked down below including that uh pencil sharpener so wear and tear uh you know because you know, they are a watercolor pencil, but they're kind of creamy. Do they use up pretty quickly? No, I was really impressed. I would say, um, kind of one of my complaints with Neocolor 2 crayons is they're almost too creamy. So once you start adding water, uh, to the pencil, so if you're dipping it, uh, directly into a cup of water and then coloring with it, that pigment releases super easy and a ton of it. So it can be kind of hard to control, uh, with the Neocolor 2 crayons. It's almost like too much all at once. Um, these pencils again are are really kind of happy medium when it comes to that. It releases pretty easily, but it's not like so much that you can't control it. And so all of these, I swatched most, you know, different things. I created different samples. Um, and you can see there's a little bit of wear and tear on some of them, like the lighter colors, maybe because I was building up a lot more color um, for the swatch. But really, these are going to last you a very, very long time. I was really impressed. And again, the weight of them, these are you know, thicker than kind of a traditional, I'm trying to see if I have a pencil right here. I don't, but you know, these were made to be slightly thicker in diameter than typical watercolor pencils. They are pretty close to the thickness of a Neocolor 2 crayon. Um, it's kind of hard to tell with the ink tents. They're probably pretty close to the ink tents, except that you have to think that the pigment is a lot smaller than the wood encasing. So the wood encasing is the same as the Distress watercolor pencils, but this is not all pigment. A lot of this is wood and it's actually very uh, thin in there. So I don't know, it's probably, you're probably gonna get more pigment uh, even though this is a longer pencil in the distressed watercolor pencils than you do in the ink tents. And if you know, ink tents are extremely expensive. Uh, so if you're looking at cost wise, Distressed watercolor pencils are going to be your go-to. The only difference really is going to be, well, one of the main differences is that ink tents are permanent once they are dry. So if something was to spill on your Bible or your project, you can, you know, it wouldn't reactivate. Um, but that also makes it hard to blend because as you're blending out a background, as it dries, it's permanent. So you can't go back and rework um, that color once it's dried because it's permanent. So um, the water distressed watercolor pencils are not permanent once they are dry. Uh, and so what I did when I did these swatches is I actually colored directly onto some watercolor paper, wet that, and then drew out the color. And then I went back in after it dried and added a little bit of water. And you'll see that you can see how that uh, Distress Watercolor Pencil was reactivated. And you don't see that as much with the other products. Gelatos are permanent once they are dry. Inktense pencils are permanent once they are dry. Crayons are pretty, um, once they've been wet out and drawn out, they stay pretty permanent. You really have to work at them. Crayon, the Distress Crayons also have a dry down factor even just once you've applied them to the paper and haven't applied water yet. So that's kind of a difference between the crayons and the watercolor pencils. So if you just scribble the Distress Crayon down on paper and don't immediately wet it, it will 
dry. The pigment will actually dry. And in fact, you'll notice it'll start to dry even in the casing. And so you may need to replace them um, as they get drier. Uh, and so they can be a little bit harder to wet and to work with. Um, these are not that way. They don't, they're a pencil. So you can color and then you've got some time, come back and wet it and it will wet and react out. So Another thing I like, um, and with distressed crayons, you can't get that really fine detail if you're coloring into a spot like you can with the distressed watercolor pencils. So just another difference between uh, those. So like I said, I colored those out uh, so that you could see how, you know, the pigment releases. Um, these colors, I try to pick kind of the similar, you know, color, um, you know, for each one of those as I was doing it. So that's just kind of a quick look at what they are. Again, I would say you know, mostly between a watercolor pencil and a Neo Color 2 when it comes to uh, consistency and kind of how they behave. I uh, definitely prefer these over these two, uh, in fact. So let's look at a Bible and kind of see how that works out because I know that's going to be a question about bleed through and things like that. So I just have this My Promise Bible. This is just uh, one that I had reviewed years ago um, and I kind of just use it more as a tester for you guys to test different products in, you know, stamping and pens and things like that because the paper is pretty uh, spot on with other um, journaling Bibles. It may be a little bit I'm uh, not thinner. It's pretty much the same as other journaling Bibles. So what I did is I went ahead and swatched out all three sets of colors in the back here. Um, this is set one, set two, set three, and actually set three is right here. One, two, three. Uh, I scribbled on this side. I scribbled directly to the paper first and then activated it with some water. And then on this side, I dipped the pencil into some water and then colored directly onto the paper. And I'll show you that. So just, I have some plain water here, dipping the pencil in the water and then coloring directly to the paper. That's how I did this uh, second set of swatches here, just to see if it behaved differently. Now, on the back side, what you'll see, and this was kind of expected for the most part, they do not bleed through, even when you're going direct to paper with that wet pigment. Uh, if you have been smooshing technique with distress inks, um, a stamping with distress inks, distress oxides, distress oxides don't bleed quite as much, but as soon as water gets on them, they bleed through. And no matter what people tell you, I know people will say they don't bleed. They do. As soon as water gets on it, it bleeds through the Bible paper. Um, those typically bleed. So with these, you did not have bleed through necessarily with the, you know, going to the paper with the wet pencil, uh, except for some of the, the pinks and reds. And that's pretty typical with a lot of different products. I don't know what it is about red pigment. Um, you know, red ink has a tendency to bleed through more red, you know, just different red products have a tendency to bleed more. So there is a little bit of bleed through, uh, not when you go to the paper dry and then activate with water, like a wet paintbrush that didn't bleed. But if you dipped it in the water and then went directly to the page, um, it, that pigment did, you know, start to come through the paper a little bit with, um, this is Villainous Potion also came through just a little bit, but considering, you know, compared to Distress products, do I have Distress Ink on here? Yeah, so this is, this green is a Distress Oxide Ink stamped, and you can see that comes through quite a bit. So in comparison to that, definitely did not bleed through nearly as much. Um, this other is just ghosting. You're able to see the color on the back side of the page, just the same as you're able to see, you know, the text that is printed, but very, very, very little bleed through and only from kind of the reds and pinks. Um, actually, this is a, a purple. This is Seedless Preserves that's coming through as bright pink uh, in there. So a little bit of bleed through, but you know, if you're wanting to play with distress products and wanting to play with some of those distress techniques, these are going to be great for you if you're worried about bleed through, because there's very, very, very minimal, uh, bleed through with these pencils. Okay. Had some questions about working over, uh, gesso or acrylic paint. So on this paper, which you cannot see, uh, on the left-hand side, I have some Art Basics clear gesso. On the right-hand side, I just have some white acrylic gesso. Um, acrylic gesso is going to be very similar to acrylic paint. So I didn't do acrylic paint also. Um, but just to kind of give you an idea, if you are prepping on your pages, how these are going to react. So I'm going to kind of try to stick with the same similar colors here, except this pencil is wet. 
Okay, so if I color on here, again, this is clear gesso on this side, this is white gesso on this side, um, and then we'll activate that in just a second. Um, also, you can just dip these directly into water and then color onto there, and you just get this really pigmented, creamy, paint. It doesn't stay wet forever. So as you are coloring, you'll see it'll go too dry as the water, you know, is deposited onto the paper. It'll go back to a dry pencil and it does not, you know, it does not get used up super, super quick, which is nice. Uh, I just have a water brush and so we'll just activate that pigment and you can see you can't, I mean, it completely dissolves to where you can't even see the line that was drawn on that gesso. So it plays just fine on gesso. Let's be wet this out. I would say that it actually, you know, I don't typically prep my pages. I don't love how a lot of mediums play on gesso, but this does seem to kind of hold on to it. Um, one of my complaints about working on gesso is it just, it's too, too slick of a surface. So I'm just jabbing a bunch of water on there just to see what what happens and you can see it's you know it's great it works just fine so if you're prepping your pages because you're worried about bleed through um, or maybe you do a lot of mixed media these are going to play just fine uh, on gesso one thing I forgot to, to mention in the bible and this is a complaint about some of the watercolor pencils and things like that is when you color dry onto the paper and then activate it with water somewhere here, <laughs> oftentimes it will leave a mark. Like you are not able to completely dissolve the pigment with water. Uh, you'll see that a lot with gesso or not gesso, um, gelatos. If you color directly onto the like bare paper with gelatos and then try to activate it, it's really hard to get that line gone that where you colored it down. You do not have that problem with these distressed watercolor pencils. Um, I was able to completely dissolve. Remember, this is where I colored dry first and then activated with water, just like I did on these sides here. Um, I was able to completely dissolve the pencil. A couple of these, just I didn't work it hard enough. I just barely, you know, added some water. Maybe the black soot might leave a little bit of a line, um, but for the most part, very, very easy to dissolve that color completely. So if you're wanting to, you know, do a background, um, lay down a ton of color, activate it with water, you are able to, because they're so much creamier than a typical pencil, you are able to dissolve that really, really well. I love what this is doing on the gesso. It's kind of creating all this fun texture, which is something, you know, unique to distressed products. They just play and react differently with water than other products do. So I really love even how that's working on there. Okay. So I think that mostly answered the questions that I received about them specifically. Um, so let's kind of dive in and look at some of the different techniques that you can do with these pencils. Um, I have a set of samples here. And then we'll go through, I'll show you the sample and then I'll also show you how I did it. So for this first one, this is pretty basic. This is just stamping and then coloring in uh, with those pencils. And so you can see I'm able to blend colors. I really love that I had laid down, I think this is salvaged patina and then came back in with some twisted citron um, over the top of it. And that twisted citron really shines over the top of that. They're just, and you'll see this when I do some stamping, the pigment in them, it's not as translucent as typical watercolor. And so you're able to kind of layer colors and still be able to see those specific colors. So let's go ahead and kind of recreate and I'll show you what I did. Now I am gonna work in a stamp positioning tool just because I'm working on watercolor paper. So it is textured. Uh, watercolor paper, just because it's what I've got right here, but you can do these techniques in your Bible. I will say that when you are stamping and coloring, uh, one of the downsides, let's see, I'm going to use this little guy right here. Um, because they are so pigmented, it is nice to be able to come back in and re-stamp your image. And I'll show you what I mean here. So I'm going to go ahead and ink this up with some Versafine Onyx Black ink. You do want to use a permanent uh, ink, so like Stazon, Archival ink, Versafine, something that you can use with watercolors. Now you can use these just as dry 
um, pencils and not have to activate them with water, though I don't typically use um, pencils in that way, but you, you can do that. Okay, so I'm just gonna leave that just as is, and then we're gonna heat set this and start coloring it in. Okay, so there's a couple different ways that you can color this in. So you can go in, um, let's see, I'm gonna take some fossilized amber. Uh, so you can just go dry to the paper and lay down some pigment and then come back and activate it with a water brush or you know just a regular paint brush. I do wanna make sure I don't have any of that pink on there. So very, very easy. You can see it just really lights up. Similar to Inktense pencils in that way. Inktense are very, very intense in color and these are kind of similar to that, the way that they react. Or you can dip your pencil in water and then color, I'm trying to hold too many things here, color directly that way. Though that does lay down quite a bit of pigment and you do kind of have to keep going back in and dipping it in the water. Because like I said, the water deposits onto the paper and then it's dry pencil again. So I will be showing you some different ways that this works. This, it's a little bit more difficult to control the color lay down that way. I, if I'm coloring it in, probably would lay down dry color and then go back in with a wet paintbrush. But you can see I'm able to blend things and move things around. Okay, so I'm gonna dry this. All right, so one thing you may notice is that that color kind of sits on top of the black stamping. So it does, um, kind of obscure the black. So if you are not wanting to restamp, let's say you've stamped in your Bible and you're coloring, you would wanna be very careful that you are not going over the black lined areas with the pencils. Because they are so pigmented, it kind of adds a layer of pigment over the top of the stamp. So it is nice to be in a stamp positioning tool where you can re-ink your image and then restamp it. and then bring back the intensity of the black over the top of that color. But that is a very, very basic way to use these pencils is just to color things in. So one thing I will say is if you guys like the look of watercolor, but find watercolors to be kind of tricky to work with, tricky to control, you know, you're having a hard time with your water to pigment ratio and things like that. These are really convenient because you can lay down your color dry and then just go in with a damp paintbrush and activate that color and move it around. Very, very easy, especially for on the go is less mess. Um, you can also color uh, directly from the pencil. So if you've got your wet paintbrush, you can pick up color from the tip of the brush and then add it in to the areas of your image. Maybe you want to go in and add some more shading to an area. You know, it's very easy to activate that pigment and then drop it into areas. Um, you can see I'm able to layer things because that bottom layer is dry. I can just go right over the top of it and it is not activating the bottom layer too, too much, even though it is not permanent, but I can kind of work it and rub it and get it to blend in. So lots of different ways that you can you know, color with those pencils. So for those of you who love to color in your Bibles, uh, these would be great. Um, but like I said, if I'm going black, I probably would uh, stamp on a separate paper, color it out, and then fussy cut this and use it as an ephemera piece rather than doing it directly in my Bible. That way I can double, uh, double stamp. So it is nice to have uh, a stamp positioning tool for that. Okay, so let's go ahead, set those aside, and we'll move on to the next way to use these. Okay, this is by far my absolute favorite way to use these Distress watercolor pencils and probably how you're gonna see me use them most often. And that is coloring a stamp with them and then stamping it. And you get this beautiful watercolor look. Definitely a looser feel than you get with, you know, stamping and then coloring it in. Um, both beautiful, but I really, really love this. So. Uh, you don't have to have a stamp positioning tool for this technique, though it does make it a little bit simpler uh, so that you can do, you know, bits and pieces uh, 
at a time, not all one, you know, stamping. So I am using the Floral Outlines stamp here. And I'm just going to lay this out on here. Try to fit it on there. Okay, and so I'm gonna pick this up. Now, like I said, you don't have to have a stamp positioning tool, but this is really great if you're wanting to add multiple colors to a stamp. As you'll know, if you were trying to ink this up with different colors, it can be a little tricky. You can use these smaller ink cubes um, and kind of get in there different areas, um, but it can be hard, especially because you have those, you know, harsh lines. This is so amazing. So I am going to start I've done this a couple different ways and I found it helpful to spritz my stamp just a little bit. Again, just using plain distilled water just to get the stamp kind of wet. And then we're gonna do that technique where we dip the pencil in water until it gets activated there. And then we're gonna color onto the stamp. And you do kind of have to play around uh, with this to get a feel for how much water to have on the pencil when you dip it. Um, and having the water already down on the stamp does help so that it doesn't dry quite as quickly um, because there is some water sitting on there, you know, continuously activating the pigment. So I ideally would go ahead and lay down, you know, the color for one area. You can mix some colors on here. So maybe you want to come back and add a little bit of red to the center here. And this you're gonna definitely get um, just a more loose, you know, design. And I have found that you can do this with lined areas or super solid stamps. Uh, you're just gonna get different looks. So I've only colored in that main purple flower and I'm gonna stamp that down. And then I don't clean this off, I just leave it because then every time I'm stamping it, it is adding some more washiness to it. And then I can come in and I'm using set two just to show the colors in set two, um, but then I'll come in and color in some different areas. You can color this all at once. So if you're not using a stamp positioning tool, um, let's say you're just using a stamp block, what you'll do, and I'll do it for this one, is I'm gonna go through and lay down some color on here and then let's say I'm going to go ahead and add in my greens for the greenery so I can go ahead and do that and because these are not permanent when they are dry you can reactivate them so as things are drying I just have to go in and spritz it with a little water and that will reactivate the pigment but like I said it is easier to do uh with the stamp positioning tool and then you can just stamp down, you know, each section at a time, but not necessary. So I can go in and add, maybe I want some browns to kind of get it kind of fall like. So I'm just adding to the base of those leaves and the stem. And these are all gonna blend so nicely together and just gives you this really soft watercolor look. So then I can spritz this and then stamp it. So if you were using a stamp block, you could just go ahead and color in the entire stamp and then just spritz it with some water before you stamp it down and that's what will activate things. So you can see now it has reactivated this area so it's getting some more wicking in there, um, filling in those leaves with that brown. So let's come in and color in some of those florals here, the other little florals that we have. So there's some right here going in with Kitsch Flamingo. And you'll see I kind of keep going back and forth to activate the pigment on the pencil. And you just do just want to be careful that you're not getting too much water because then it gets very blobby and, you know, kind of gets that mushier look. Maybe that is what you want, but I like to kind of control the color a little bit. I'm gonna go in with some iced spruce for these other leaves. This is kind of a really pretty bluish gray green. And again, like I said, you get that fun watercolor look without having to fuss with watercolor. Like it looks like it was watercolored. Okay. 
So then I am going to spritz that just a little bit. And again, that is going to activate some of the pigment that's on there. If you're not wanting that, you can clean off the stamp after each, you know, impression. So there you can see you've got some florals in there, um, but then you can take this further. So I like it just left with the line drawing, but you can go in again, because these are not permanent, you can activate that pigment and draw it into the flower. So let's say we want to go in and kind of fill in color to this floral. You can see I'm activating and coloring it in. So you kind of get that no line watercolor look so there is, you know, a little bit of a line from where you stamped, but all I'm doing is just my paintbrush is wet and I'm just going over those colored areas and drawing that color into the rest of the flower. So same thing for the leaves. So it just gives you a different look than just stamping with it. I think this would be great for making cards. Like I said, I am just mostly Bible journaling, but it is nice to use your products for different things. And then let's say, you know, I wanted to come in and add some more color. So I can pick up color from the crayon and kind of drop that into areas and add some shading if I want to. That ice spruce. So some of the lighter colors, you know, the pigment isn't going to be as strong when you draw it out. And you do want to be careful because you can kind of obliterate. So if I go in here really wet, the line does stay, you know, stain a little bit, but you can really, you know, blur out that line and then lose the definition of whatever it is that you have stamped. So I just try to stay within the lines and kind of draw the color into the shape, but you can see how you just get this really loose watercolor look with this technique. Again, you can come in and add some shading maybe to this orange. This is a little flat. I think I just used orange. What was that? Spice marmalade when I stamped this. Then I'm coming in with some barn door and just dropping in a little bit of color while it's wet and getting some shading. So really, really my absolute favorite technique for these is stamping uh, with them. I think that just gives such a beautiful effect and it's a great way to get that in your Bible without having the bleed through. This does not bleed through like other distress inks. So that is stamping with them. Again, just dipping it in the water, coloring on the stamp, stamping it down. Um, I have noticed that they do stain your stamp a little bit, but um, it's not like, you know, some products you have to be careful. I'm trying to think of which one. There's some that you just don't, like, I don't think Tim Holtz advises to use the Distress Crayons on your stamps. Um, I have seen people do it, but it's not advisable. These are not gonna ruin, because it's water reactive, I'm able to just go back in there with a baby wipe, clean it off, and now my stamp is clean, just stained, but it is, it is clean, it's good to go. I can use it with inks and I'm not gonna have a uh, problem. So there is stamping with the Distress Watercolor Pencil. So let's move this out of the way and then we'll show you the next technique. All right, another way that you can use these is through a stencil. Now I love using stencils. You guys have seen me do these in a variety of different ways, even dry embossing with stencils. Uh, I don't typically just blend ink through a stencil. I like to do uh, different techniques and mediums through it to get different looks. And so this is another way to do that. So I have the autumn layering stencil here, uh, and I'm going to show you how to do this kind of fun watercolor look with your stencils. Of course, it doesn't have to be, uh, you know, leaves like this. It can even just be shapes and things like that. Now I will say that it is helpful to have your pencils uh, sharpened. So I am going to sharpen these. Now I'm not going to save the sh shavings just for the sake of the video. It goes a little bit faster, but it is easier to have a sharper uh, tip on your pencil. And then you're just going to go through and kind of outline the shape. Again, the duller your pencil is, the thicker that this line will be. Uh, just giving you a different look, but we're just gonna go through 
lay down a little bit of color here. And again, I am using set two just to show you uh, the colors in here since this does seem to be the set that is easier to get your hands on. And you may need to, you know, stop and periodically sharpen your pencil. It doesn't dull super, super fast, um, but I mean, it does. Cause again, it is hard like a pencil, but not dry. It's like a creamy hard. I don't know how to explain it. Okay, so now that I've got some pigment down on there, I'm gonna just take my water brush or a wet paintbrush, depending on what you're using. And I'm just gonna touch that drawn line to pull out some of the color into the rest of that image and just color it in just like so. And so you're kind of getting, again, that kind of no line, line watercolor uh, look. So it looks like you just painted those leaves onto your project versus, you know, blending some ink through. It just gives it it's just a different, different look there. Very, very easy to activate the pigment. And then you could do, you know, multiple colors. So I just did the one color to outline, but you could outline in different colors and then you would get a lot of variety. You can go back in and drop other colors in there to add shading and variety. So this is just kind of the basic way to do this technique. But again, you can really kind of go crazy with these because they blend very, very easily uh, to get, you know, different, different looks. So I am making sure I activate all that color just so I don't have any dry areas just like that. Now for the splatter. So I have a little bit of splatter on here. I know a lot of people love the Lindsay splatters, but don't love the mess of it. This is a little bit more controlled way to do that. So I'm going to just activate the pigment just a little bit on the tip of the pencil. And then I'm just going to take my brush and kind of flick it off the pencil and it's gonna give you a nice fine splatter. You're not gonna get those super big um, chunky splatters um, like you do with some paint brushes. This is gonna give you a much finer splatter but just giving you another nice texture. Now when I have my pencil uh, super wet like that, I do like to go ahead and just kind of dry it off a little bit before it goes back into the case. It does waste a little bit of pigment. Um, I guess you could let it air dry before you stick it back in there, but I'm impatient. So there is how to use it through a stencil. Again, think about using it with a variety of different stencils, um, different colors and shading, but again, just giving you a watercolor look without having to have watercolor skills at all. Okay, now you do have a little bit of pigment on your stencil. So you do need to clean your stencil, but you can clean it off on your project. So I'm just taking a baby wipe and wiping through the stencil and that's activating a little bit of color that's on the stencil and then dragging it into the shape. Now, depending on how much pigment you have on there, you're gonna get a different look, but now I have soft, washy, watercolor. I mean, so you kind of get a two for one, even just with cleaning your stencils, that just gives you a totally different look than this, you know, kind of harsh line look. I really, really love that. So another way to use your stencils is just cleaning them, cleaning them, cleaning off that watercolor pencil off your stencils gives you a technique all in its own. So let me clean that and I'll show you another stencil technique. Okay, so this one here is kind of faint. I'll use a darker color um, for this one. I have found that this next technique works better on thinner paper. So while I was using um, some watercolor paper for all of these other ones, this paper is too thick for this next technique. So this is just regular cardstock. This would work great in your Bible. Um, and this is a technique you has, may have done like back in grade school with crayons. So I'm actually gonna lay the stencil underneath the paper and then I'm gonna go in with my watercolor pencil and I'm just going to kind of lay it on its edge and color over the top of this. And this is gonna give you, I think they call it like engravings, right? You can do this over different, you know, textures and things like that, building up 
color as heavy as you would like. This would be a great background technique. And this is another nice thing about these being woodless. You could not do this technique, say with the Distress, or I'm sorry, with the Derwent Inktense pencils because you've got that wood encasing. Uh, it's really, you know, you can't get flat on the edge. If you wanted to do this even, larger, you could take off this entire wrapping off of this pencil and just use the whole side of the pencil if you wanted to do that. If that's a technique that you're doing, you know, frequently, you could use the entire edge. But uh, I have plenty of room up here on the top to just lay that, you know, kind of at like a 45 degree angle and I'm rubbing over the stencil. Now that is, you know, you can leave it as is, but because these react with water, I'm going to go ahead and spray this to activate that and you'll see it's just giving this really fun watercolor look so there is that one you can see for this one I think I used this uh, cracked pistachio and because it was lighter you don't see as much of the in-between you're only seeing the actual you know design on the stencil but you could try doing this on a prepped you know, with gesso and it would really activate the uh, pigment. I think this is too thick. We can, we can try it though. Let's do prize ribbon. So this is just clear, the Prima clear gesso. You can see how that wicks and moves because it's on the gesso. And you could even go in there and kind of touch it to really activate all of those scribbly areas. I mean, and really create a fun background and using your stencils in a totally different way. So I'm gonna go ahead and dry that. Okay, I actually really love how that turned out so you can see similar but different what I'm actually picking up in here uh, is the texture of my finger so I applied the gesso with my finger and so it left little like swipe marks and so it's even picking up that texture so really fun way to do some backgrounds with your stencils on the underside so you're getting kind of a different pattern even than you would get just going over the top of it but let me show you even one more way uh, to use stencils with these watercolor pencils okay so for this technique I have a nonstick craft sheet and we're gonna lay down some pigment onto the craft sheet so I'm gonna dip the pencil into some water that just makes it a little bit easier to release you can even spray your mat to release the pigment and I'm just gonna kind of similar to ink smushing, like you would smush out your ink pad onto the nonstick mat. I'm gonna do something similar with the pencil. So I'm just getting some pigment down onto my mat. Let's go in with this brighter blue. No, let's go in with some pink. So just giving myself a little puddle of color. And again, another nice thing about this compared to ink pads is you don't want to contaminate your ink pads, right? So you wouldn't like go let your colors, you know, you wouldn't stamp one ink pad over the top of the color that's already on there. But these you can just wipe off and it's it's not contaminated with the color anymore. So I'm able to, able to kind of pre-mix things on here um, a lot easier than with my ink pads. So I have my little puddle of color there. And then I'm going to actually lay my stencil down into that color and we're just stamp with the stencils. So the color is on the back side of the stencil and I'm just going to press this down. You do want a separate piece of paper or paper towel or something to press that down. And then when I lift that, you've got this so really again another fun watercolor technique with these 
pencils. Now, can you do this with other things? Yes, you could do this with Neocolor 2 crayons. Um, you could probably get away with it with the distressed crayons, maybe if you're working quick enough before they dry. Um, but these, you know, it's just the, the consistency of them is so nice. And again, the color palette, I'm familiar with the color palette. So there is stamping with your stencils. I mean, how, how fun is that? So you could also you know, use the pigment that you have on here now. You could do the smushing technique where you pick up the color and create a background so you don't have to waste what is on here. You can use this similar to inks, but again, this is not going to bleed through, especially if you're just using it in this way. If you're going in super pigmented, like dipping it in the water, you saw that those purples and pinks might bleed through, but with this, you're not going super heavy with the pigment. So you can get that washy watercolor look in the background without having to worry about bleed through. Love, love, love it. So a couple different ways to use those with stencils. All right, this one is using the technique that I already showed you, uh, stamping with the pencils. So getting this, uh, you know, dipping it in the water, inking up your stamp with the distressed watercolor pencils and then stamping. But this is a neat uh, aspect about these pencils that are different from other products is that they're, it, they are pigment and they kind of behave similar to the distress oxide inks. If you played with Distress Oxide inks, one of the neat features about them is using them on darker surfaces because of that oxide feature, the pigment that's in them, it really makes them shine on darker paper. So this is not something that you could do with traditional watercolor pencils because those are much more translucent while these have pigment to them. So they're going to show up on dark backgrounds. So this was using um, probably Kitsch Flamingo, Actually, no, I know what it was. It was cracked pistachio, tattered rose, and uh, picked crushed olive. Crushed olive, tattered rose, and um, cracked pistachio for this one. So I do find that it works better with some of the lighter colors for this technique. Um, than with the darker colors, but the darker colors do show up in some aspect as well. And so when you first stamp it, it may not be super obvious, but once you dry it, it's like glows. It just comes to life. And this was doing nothing but dipping it in water, coloring on the stamp, and then stamping it down on dark. This is black, um, just cheapy black cardstock, and this is craft cardstock uh, using the Distress Damask stamp, so rubber stamp. I mean, I love that. And so you could experiment with inking your backgrounds. If you want to ink your background, something super, super dark with Distress Inks, blending it, and then stamping over the top of it, you would just get a really amazing effect with these that you can't achieve with some of the other water reactive mediums because they are more translucent uh, than these Distress watercolor pencils. So just stamping on darker darker cardstocks and backgrounds really gives you a fun, fun look with these uh, than some of the other products out there. All right, lots of coloring that you can do with these and it's like precise watercolor. So this was using the uh, new texture fade. This is acorns. It has leaves and acorns on it. Really love this 3D texture. I just did it with some craft cardstock, really inexpensive craft cardstock. And then you can go in and color over the top of this. So this is hard to color an embossing folder unless you're gonna rub an ink pad over it. Uh, you could go in with crayons, but again, because of the dry factor, it's a little bit more difficult to blend um, and work with these in this way. Neo Color 2 crayons, you could do this if you're working on white paper, but these don't have this same kind of pigment effect on the darker backgrounds like Distress Watercolor pencils. So you can color this a few different ways. You can lay down the color first and then activate it with um, water to color it in just like that. It's going to give it very, very pigmented and you can stay nice and controlled on the surface of the texture that you have there. You can pick up color, find something to wipe my brush on here. Pick up color from the tip of the pencil and add that in there. And again, because of that pigment property, 
they blend, but they also maintain their color. So you can see the orange on the red. It doesn't just completely, you know, mush into nothingness. Um, you can also use that watercolor palette that I had created to color it in. I have found it's a little bit softer if you do it from here. So if I just use a paintbrush to activate that color, pick it up. This is more like using it as a watercolor, but you are still gonna get that pigment factor. It's just not quite as pigmented as going directly from the crayon uh, or coloring directly on there. But then to get this detail, I actually added color directly to the folder. So this is something that's nice about uh, these pencils is you can get into detailed areas. So I'm just taking the pencil and I'm dry, just coloring into the recessed area of this folder. And so it's gonna apply color to kind of the detail areas there. So I'm not adding too much. So I colored all of my leaves and acorns and then I added some black soot into here. And then this time I used vintage photo. And then I'm gonna spray this so that activates the crayon, the pencil. And then I'm gonna fit this back into the folder carefully, maybe. There we go, it kind of fits like a puzzle piece. And then I would run this back through my uh, die cutting machine. So I'll do that off camera real quick. Okay, and then that's gonna add color. It's a little bit harder to see just because I use brown instead of black, but then that's gonna add color into the detailed areas and bring some more detail into uh, this embossing folder. And it looks like it didn't have it quite fit in perfectly, so it kind of re-embossed it into different, like it's not embossed in the same area. So that was an oops on my part, but I guess it kind of gives it a different a different look, right? <laughs> but that just would give some detail to your embossing folder. So you can get more use out of your embossing folders instead of just embossing paper, running some ink over the you know raised areas and calling it good. You can go in and precisely color different areas of your embossing folders and give some more interest to them. So again, another nice feature about being able to sharpen these, use them as a finer detail piece is kind of getting into the nooks and crannies. You could also experiment with um, coloring on the flat area and then embossing it and that's going to add color down into those larger flatter areas. So really can detail color your embossing folders much easier uh, with these distressed watercolor pencils. Okay, so I had mentioned that one of the main re ways that I use gelatos is just as a pigment to tint other mediums. I don't really use them for much else other than that because they are straight pigment. It makes it very easy to tint, you know, white acrylic paint, gessos, texture paste, things like that. Now, you've seen in some of my past videos, I kind of struggle um, adding color to texture paste. Uh, I tried to use distress inks, distress spray stains, but because those are fluid, uh, it kind of makes the medium a little bit more runny. And so these are great for tinting textures without changing the consistency. It's only adding color because they are pigment. So what I have here is I use Villainous Potion to tint some white gesso and then some clear gesso. And so I can get fun glazes. I can add this through a stencil and have colored texture through a stencil. So I'm going to show you how I do that very, very easily with these uh, pencils. So you are going to need a pencil sharpener. That's the easiest way to do this. I want to make sure I don't have any residual color in that sharpener. Okay. And then I like to just take it out of here and just get my shavings directly onto my craft sheet. Let's use some Mermaid Lagoon. So I'm just going to sharpen my pencil so I get some little shavings out on there. And so this is just straight pigment. You can see I'm just plopping it directly onto uh, the mat there. And here's where you can kind of see how this is pencil. It does crumble, but I am also able to pick up and they stay splintery. If it was just super, super creamy, it would just kind of melt and be waxy, but it is not waxy. It is 
splintery. And one question I didn't answer was writing over the top of them. So you'll see because they're not waxy, they're very, very easy to write over the top of because they have like a watercolor or a watercolor pencil finish to them. They don't clog up your pens. So I have the, um, where is it? This one here, the zero or 0 0.005 micron uh, pen. This is the itty, itty, itty bitty teeny weeny <laughs> little tip. Uh, I actually don't ever use this one because most mediums clog up this uh, pen nib because it's so detailed and small, but I decided to try to use it to write the names on this color swatch to show you this is the same pen. I did not wipe it off. I did not dry it off. Nothing. I just started at the top, worked all the way writing, and even all the way to the very end, it is still working. It is not clogged up by any of the pigment um, because it is that pencil texture, not a waxy crayon texture. It's very easy to write over. That is my biggest complaint about gelatos and why I don't use them in my Bible is it's near impossible to write over the top of these. Even when it's a super thin layer, they're just more waxy and so they clog up your micron pens very, very easily um, when you write over them. So that is a really nice feature about these distressed watercolor pencils. But uh, I have my shavings there and then I'm gonna plop out a little bit of gesso. This is just that white acrylic uh, gesso that I have in a small pot. And then we are just going to use a palette knife and because it's you know meant to react with water or liquid um, moisture, it is very easily going to just blend right in with that gesso. That's another thing with gelatos is I really have to work to get the pigment to break up and release you know the color and be smooth. But you can see this is real time. It does not take very long to completely dissolve that pigment into the gesso. I mean, I don't mind there being little speckles, but I mean, you can push out all those speckles till it's nice, smooth, even color. Now, because this is white gesso, it is going to change the color a little bit, just the same as if you added, you know, white to anything else. It does kind of lighten the color a little bit compared to true, what is this, Mermaid Lagoon. Um, so it is slightly different because it's a white gesso base, but I'll show you with the clear gesso as well. Okay, so once again, I'm just going to sharpen out some little pigment splinters. You could use a palette knife and like chop off a chunk, but that's gonna affect the, you know, tip. You're not gonna be able to maintain that tip. So with the sharpener, you know, now I have a nice sharpened tip. I'm gonna use the pencil shavings. So it's all getting used, not wasted, and I'm not, you know, obliterating the shape of my pencil. So this is just some clear gesso. And this is the Art Basics. I like this one for Bible journaling specifically because it's kind of in between like a matte gel medium that is super, super smooth and then um, Liquitex clear gesso, which is really, really, really gritty. Um, this has a little texture to it, but it's not super, super textured. So um, mediums can grab a hold of it, um, but it's also not like sandpaper. So you can see the color is a little bit different with the clear gesso because it doesn't have the white that's affecting the color. And you can just see how quick and easy it is to blend that color in and it's not changing the consistency of my gesso. If I was adding paint, if I'm adding uh, spray stains, if I'm adding ink pads, because those are all fluid, it makes the medium more fluid. So it just is a little trickier to work with, especially when you're putting it through a stencil, but this maintains the integrity of the texture of the medium, especially with like crackle paste. You don't really want to alter crackle paste if you want crackle paste to work like it's supposed to. Um, you know, you don't, this is where it's really nice to tint it with that just straight pigment. And you can see, even though this is clear gesso, I can do it really thin. So it's like a glaze or I can build it up. So if I did it through a stencil, I can get a more opaque color, but then it maintains the you know integrity of the color compared to doing it with white gesso. But you can imagine putting this through 
a stencil and then maybe doing some ink blending or ink smushing, things like that over the top of it. Um, and this is going to maintain its color uh, and kind of act as a resist. So I just, this is really kind of an underrated technique is coloring, tinting your mediums and very, very easy to do with just straight pigment. I, you guys, I love, I love these pencils. There are so many things that you can do with them, not just color things in, but we'll do one last technique here that is coloring. Okay, so last but not least is coloring in uh, ephemera. So I have this piece, this is from By the Well for God. Uh, you do wanna make sure that you're working on ephemera that is printed with a laser jet. So if you're printing your own pieces at home and you're using an inkjet printer, this won't work because the water will activate the ink that you've printed with. So you either need to print with an inkjet, or I'm sorry, print with a laser jet printer so you can send them to an office supply and have them printed, or, you know, ephemera that you've purchased typically is uh, a laser jet. So you are able to get water on it and it doesn't obscure the lines. But um, there was a set of just uh, plain black and white images. And so you can add a color to these. So again, a couple different ways you can add color in there, uh, dry and then activate it with your paintbrush. I have found it helpful to start away from the color, lay down some, uh, just plain water and then pull the color out into that water. That kind of gives you the smoothest, uh, transition. And of course you can build that up. You can pick up some color from the pencil and kind of build up some shading in there if you want to. I'm trying to. But with a cardstock piece like this, you don't want to work it too much because it's not meant to be, you know, super, super uh, wet. You can dip into your water and then go and color in that's gonna lay down a lot more pigment and then maybe you want to kind of smooth that out with your water brush. That's gonna give you a very intense uh, coloring. So very, very simple to color in your ephemera pieces. If you're using like the people from Tim Holtz, let me see if I have any of those. I don't have the paper dolls, but I do have the snapshots. So maybe you wanna add some color to her shirt her dress, um, you know, his clothing, something like that. You can pick up the color, you can color it in, activate it. Um, it's gonna add just a wash of color over the top of these areas um, to add, you know, add a little something to it. So let's, let's try that here. I guess we can just use this one. So let's say we want a little blue to her skirt so I can go in and this is a smooth, um, it's smooth what this is printed on. There's no texture to this piece, but I am still able to get color to stick to, uh, stick to it. And then I can go in and kind of activate that and just add kind of a nice soft wash of color to her clothing. And if you've worked with distress inks, you know that this can be kind of a hard technique to do. The distress ink doesn't necessarily want to tint this very easily, um, but these are a little bit easier. Again, because they are more, you know, they have like a pigment to them, it's just a little bit easier. You can go direct to water and then in there, but that is going to lay down quite a bit of color and you may kind of obscure the you know lines and shading because again it does have pigment in it um so it's got some opacity to it but you can see the very very vibrant way to color that in and i'm just as it starts to you can kind of feel it as you're coloring as it starts to go dry i'm just dipping it back into the water to activate the pigment again on the tip of it and you may need to dry it, stop and sharpen it if you want to maintain, you know, that tip so that it's easier to color in detailed areas. You can see very quick and easy way to add some color to 
uh, photos and uh, die cuts and ephemera and images like that. So you can see the difference. This is uh, coloring and then adding water and then dipping it in the water and then adding it. Let me go ahead and dry that. All right, there is it dry. I love, love how easy it is to color that in and to add some color to that image. There, There is a little bit, it looks waxy and you can feel some texture to it. Um, but it, it grabs a hold. It grabs a hold easier than distress inks do um, and just adds more color because it's more opa opaque than uh, distress inks. Love that. So coloring in your ephemera pieces, again, just another basic way um, to use those as a coloring medium. So you can use them traditionally that way, but like I showed you, there is a whole bunch of different ways that you can use these, you know, in kind of a more mixed media or watercolor. So many different ways that you can use these. Um, and then compared to some of the other products, uh, you know, similarities, but definitely differences. These are for sure going to be replacing a lot of products in my stash. Uh, Neocolor 2 crayons, again, you can do most of these techniques with these, uh, just not the more detailed techniques. I was not able to uh, sharpen this in this um, Prisma Color Sharpener. It's too, it's too fat and chunky to go in there and get sharpened. So if you're wanting to do more detailed things, these are definitely great for more detailed things. If you have, let's say, all of the colors of Neo Color 2 crayons, do you need these? I, I don't think so. If you're wanting to do more detailed, then yes, these would be better. But let me show you kind of some of the comparisons of colors as a way to kind of wrap it up here. Okay, so this is set one of the watercolor pencils. Distress watercolor pencils. That's set three, set two. Here's set one. So here is kind of a color comparison. Um, so there are some similarities, but they're not, you know, exactly the same. But as you can see, the salvage patina is one of the hardest colors to get in uh, different products. Same with speckled egg. I was not able to find that um, in any of the other products in my stash. So again, like I said, one of the reasons I love distressed products is the color line. So a little bit different there, um, but there definitely are some similarities. So those are the Neo Color 2 uh, crayons. So again, if you've got all of the colors, you do have, you know, you do have them there that are similar to these and you can try some of these uh, techniques out. Uh, Inktense pencils. So just to give you an idea, Inktense pencils are very, very intense in color, but you can see how intense distress pencils are in color. They definitely compare with Inktense as far as vibrancy. Uh, these are more uh, translucent, the Inktense pencils, uh, than the distress pencils. So you probably aren't going to get the same effects, especially if you're stamping on uh, darker backgrounds with ink tense pencils. You're not going to get that vibrancy that you get with the distress watercolor pencils. Uh, and then using them, you know, to tint mediums, it's very difficult because this is a true hard uh, pencil. You can kind of use an X-Acto knife to kind of shave off um, some shavings, but not quite as easy to use. But there is just a color layout there. So again, speckled egg and is a hard one, salvage patina, you know, you really have to wash out this color to get that. So some of the lighter colors um, you're not going to get with some of these other uh, mediums. Let's see, for set two, uh, Kitsch Flamingo has a little bit more dirtiness to it than pink in the Neo Color 2, um, but there are definitely some similar colors. Again, cracked pistachios and then one of those lighter colors. It's kind of hard to mimic. There's twisted citron. Uh, ice spruce is another one that I wasn't really able to get a good match on. Uh, antique linen didn't really have a good uh, match. So there are some missing uh, colors, but if you have complete sets of these other products, no, you may not need to have these. Um, I, I needed them in my life. They are just, the texture is just perfect between Neo Color 2s and Ink Tents. There wasn't really a good Kitsch Flamingo uh, Ink Tents pencil color, but there are. You can see just how vibrant these compare. This was definitely harder to match up 
colors in the ink tense pencil. So set two does not have as many, um, right, set two, Catch Flamingo, yes. Set two does not have as many matching colors in the other uh, products. And then set three. Salmon's kind of close to Tattered Rose, being Tattered Rose just has a little bit more dirtiness to it. Crackling Campfire, I love this color. There wasn't really a perfect match for that. Um, set three is missing a lot of colors as well. Um, so yeah, not very many Neo Color 2 crayons that match set uh, three. And then the Ink Tense pencils, there wasn't really a good tattered rose. This still is not a quite perfect match there. Um, yeah, same thing with Ink Tense. There's definitely some missing colors in there. So color palette wise, you know, there's some similarities, but not perfect, uh, perfect matches. So I hope that kind of gives you some ideas for how to use these so you can kind of judge for yourself whether you think you need to invest and add these into your stash. Um, price wise, definitely more affordable than Neo Color 2 crayons and Ink Tense pencils. So if you have not, you know, invested in those yet, I would definitely go with these over the other mediums. There's just so much more versatile, um, great color palette, very easy to use. So definitely check out those other Tip Tuesday videos that I have linked down below. There may be techniques in there that I didn't show in this video that you can use these for. Um, and I'm sure we'll be coming up with new things as we work with them even more. So I will be using them in future videos as well. So check out the description box for links to everything that I talked about. Leave any questions or comments you might have down there for me. I tried to cover as much as possible. Um, as far as comparisons, no, I don't have uh, scribble sticks. No, I don't have... Um, Stabilo pencils. No, I don't, you know, there's a lot of products that I don't have to compare them to. Uh, so I'm not able to do that. You may just have to do that on your own. Um, I know that may not be the answer, but I'm trying to just, you know, compare them to some of the things that are most commonly used in the Bible journaling uh, world. So hopefully that's helpful. But if you have other questions and comments, be sure to leave those down below. Give this video a thumbs up if it was helpful, if you enjoyed it. Subscribe to my channel if you're not already subscribed. And until next time, thank you so much. Bye-bye.